Welcome everybody to today's program, The Six Pillars to Achieving Your Goals in 2022 with the Lake Norman Chamber of Commerce. I'm Bill Russell. I uh, also have my board chair, David Keith. David uh, officially took over uh, the first of this month. David, do you want to say something on behalf of the chamber? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be uh, put in this position um, by uh, people in this room and some of my peers as well. And I'm going to work really hard to keep the, the chamber on everyone's top of mind this year. The theme is all aboard. And I think for us to be successful uh, in these still challenging times, we need all of us to be on board. We need, we need the entire community, we need the, the business community, the civic organizations, the young professionals. We've got to keep the chamber uh, prominent and active. And um, I'm going to do my best to keep this thing rolling, 2022. Thank you, David. Uh, we've got some folks in the room with us, and again, with the OWL technology, you may, you may be able to see. Um, you want to go around the room and, and Dan, just share who you are? Sure. Uh, my name is Dan Boone. I'm a Huntersville Town Commissioner, so I'm a fourth term for the town. Okay. Uh, I'm Jonathan Wilson. I'm a home inspector for Cardinal Point Home Inspections. I'm not um, born and raised in Mooresville, so just now started the chamber, so it's been pretty good so far. Meet a lot of good people. Um, excited. Okay. Mark. Uh, Mark Rennie. Uh, I own Badova's Pizza next to Tesh's. In Huntersville. So, and Dan, uh, nice to meet you. I, get I heard you serve an excellent pie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't find out. I, 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 okay, I will. Thank you. Yep. We probably have a dozen more on virtual, but rather than everybody stepping on top of each other, we we're just going to introduce the folks in the room today. Um, I'm very excited <laughs> about this program. When we start talking about getting together again, and really, I think I called David up a couple of months ago, right around the Christmas holidays, because I was assuming that you know, this whole pandemic going to be in the rearview mirror, and we're pushing through our annual meeting was, was slated for January 20th, and uh, my, uh, my presenting sponsor is Atrium Healthcare, and, and even back about the 1st of December, they said, you have the alternate date. I'm like, what do I need an alternate date for? And they said, yeah, better get an alternate date. Sure enough, uh, we're starting to see some stuff. We've, we've had, I know I have family members and close friends, and uh, I think we have some folks down in Huntersville with, with, associated with Town Hall that's all dealing with COVID issues. Um, at least this variant is not nearly as severe, um, but it is contagious. And so we've spaced out here at the Chamber of Commerce, and we appreciate those that are joining us virtually. But when we were talking about the very first programs that we could, we could have, I instantly thought of David uh, because he's done a number of programs for us. And every time I, I, I've been doing this for 30, 29 years this year, and we've had a lot of presenters come in here, but every time David does a program for us at the chamber, I walk away with, with some nugget that I'm thinking about and constantly thinking in my head, wow, that was an excellent point. I, I got to implement that. And so today, uh, most of you hopefully have set your goals for 2022. You probably should have done that October, November. But now, how do we achieve those goals and the challenges that we have in front of us to achieving those goals? So David is, is going to talk with us. He's from Action Coach. And uh, David, if you'll share a little bit about you and, and take it away. Yeah, fantastic. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, my name's David Dowdy, and I am a what's called a business coach. And all that means is I get to work directly with business owners to help them get everything out of their business that they really want. You know, and core belief is that business is a means to the life you want to live. It's not your life. I mean, I was born and raised in a small business. Dad had his own pharmacy, and um, you know, just watching him work six hour, six days a week, sometimes seven days a week, eleven hour days, and you know, it was his life. You know, not a lot of time for my brothers and me. It, it was good. Don't get me wrong. I mean. It, respect dad and everything but a lot of that work ethic was instilled into me but also the big lesson when he went to sell CVS bought him out you know when he was ready to retire they gave him a decent amount of money for the prescription file back in the day it was the file cabinet it was all <laughs> pieces of paper you know all the prescriptions and the inventory and the fixtures and stuff but the reality was he did not get the value of the business for a lifetime of work and it's fundamentally for all you business owners on the line fundamentally it was because the business centered around him you know when a buyer comes to look at your business I'm, i do business valuations from a planning perspective 
for clients and for non-clients just to see, hey, what's your business worth? Because it's never worth what the business owner really thinks it's worth. Um, but get a value of that business. And then over time, we can look at it and see is the value, not only are you making money through the year, but is the value of the business growing year over year? So that when you do go to retire and sell, that there's something there. And one of the key components is how contingent is the, the profitability of the business based on the owner? If you pull the owner out, if dad's case, pull the owner out, nobody else knew all the customers. Nobody else knew how to purchase or do the books and all that stuff. So not a lot of value in the business. They actually just bought the database. So, um, but anyway, good lesson for me in, in how I've kind of laid out my life plan. And good lesson for me now as I'm working with business owners to position the business to be better, more profitable, and be able to work without the owner being in day in day. So, you know, Kind of a background story there, but this is, uh, I guess I've owned seven businesses now um, over the course of my life. Construction, you know, home inspector, I was a general contractor. I bought the plumbing company doing the work for me. All that kind of went away in 07, 08, 09, as many people experienced. Um, so, you know, I've had, I've had not, and I'll have again. And, you know, it's nice to apply some of those life lessons, but also marry up those personal experiences with the processes and structure of a global franchise called Action Coach. We got a thousand offices around the world. So anyway, that, that gives me the, I guess the ability now in my ninth year, Bill, with Action Coach, um, to you know work day in and day out with business owners, look at me in the eye and go, man, I know what it's like start out a business, trying to figure out how to pay the bills and all that. But I get to to take the learnings and roadmap of you know 29 years of the franchise building businesses with owners around the world. You know, it, there's, there is a process, and more than anything, it's the accountability and the discipline that goes with just do what works. You know, just do what works. Follow other models. And that's what I want to do today is sort of to go through a model that works. You know, Bill and I were talking, and here we are kicking off the new year. Everybody sets goals, New Year's resolutions, and then they get, you know, within a matter of weeks or a month or so. What's the magic? to actually achieving those goals that we set out for ourselves. My belief in and my practice in doing things like this is kind of start big picture and narrow it down. And at the end, I will give you six pillars of how you actually achieve the things that you've set out to do. And it's not on you. It requires other people in your environment as well. Okay. So kind of thinking big picture, anybody familiar with the uh, Chinese bamboo plant? Okay, and all you folks online, chime in, raise your hand, come off mute. Uh, this is interactive. I've got an agenda here I want to go through, but this is for you guys. It's not for me. So as you've got questions and comments, you know, there's a lot of horsepower in the room and online. You know, let's chime in and learn from each other. But the Chinese bamboo plant actually requires watering and fertilizing daily for five years. It stays underground for five years. And then in the once it breaks through, in the course of five weeks, it grows 90 feet. I mean, do that math. 90 feet divided by five weeks is what? 14, 18, was it? 18 feet a week? Three feet, two or three feet a day? I mean, think about that. You sit there and watch it grow. And amazing that, but that isn't that what small business is about? Man, you go through the grind, you go through the grind under, underground, just going to work. Is this ever going to pay off? Man, you know, I mean, I've got three boys. The, my oldest just graduated from the University of Alabama, number two in football this year. <laughs> but, um, I've got another one in Appalachian, the one at Rockingham Community College playing baseball. But all three of them are, are looking around at the business world going, man, that overnight success. I want one of those. Games. I want that experience. I'm looking for the silver bullet. It doesn't exist. You've got to go through the grind. Man, it's like it's, they say, you know, uh, you know, the richer get richer, but really it don't. Once you take off, it's easy to keep going. That's right. You know? But you've got to do the homework. Yeah, you got to do the fundamental yeah, work. Started. Yeah, that overnight success comes after 30 years of um, a lot of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. So, Bill, if you would, we're going to experiment here, you guys, online, and we're going to hopefully switch over and show 
a slide. These are some small business administration um, statistics that I think are interesting. You may have to click through to the next slide and see that. Don't you have this? No. Um, just an arrow down. Will that work? Or you may have to restart it. I got to click on the thing. So anyway, as as Bill's working on that, um, let me to to listen in on a few of these statistics. Ninety from the SBA, ninety nine point nine percent of businesses in the U.S. are private. There's a lot of small businesses out there. All right, so just kind of click through each of those. Forty eight percent of employees um, in this country are in the private businesses. Forty eight percent work for small private businesses. The average owner is 50.3 years old. I mean, that, you know, it takes a long while to get, maybe get to the point where you do in your own business. The median income, this is a little bit dated number, 2016, but $50,000. 62% of people have, of those businesses have no staff. So 62% are one person operations. That's a huge number. So thinking about you know, the small percentage of people that actually go through the process of hiring somebody and helping share that burden, that's a whole other skill set to manage people and hold people accountable and grow your business. 54% um, say they make more money now, which by math says 46% are making less than what they may be working for somebody else. So there's, there's got to be other benefits to why you own your own business. It's for the freedom, flexibility, and you know, you make a lot of money and don't work. You can set your own schedule, right? Not. Um, over time, maybe that's the case. Only 9% have a business degree. And then this last interesting statistic, 30% of small business owners only have a high school education. So don't know where you are, don't know what your background is, but the reality is you're not on an island by yourself. There are business owners that are struggling and they're challenged with figuring this out. The majority of people can figure out a way to make a living in their business. A small percentage really figure out how to thrive. And that's where it takes outside influence, continuing education, learning, being around other business owners, like if business works here, and, you know, met, networking, mingling with other business owners at the chamber. Pick up from those that have gone before you and utilize some resources. Continue to improve yourself and learn. So today is really about um, achieving what you want out of 2022. And so as we um, go down into this, um, I'm going to get to the entrepreneurial funnel here in just a second, but um, I want to think about your life balance. If we think of business as a component of your life, but if, if we think briefly about what are the components of your life that you would set goals for in 2022? And again, people online, chime in, come off mute, speak up. What are areas of, of life that would make sense to have some intentionality and set some goals? We put business on here. What else? Family, family, my routine. Okay, but that might apply to all areas of life. What are different aspects of Business, family, what else do you, what do you, where do you spend time? Home. Okay. Home life. That might be family. It might be neighbors. It might be friends. Hobbies. Hobbies. No. No. What else comes to mind? Uh, Leela said education and training. Excellent. So that would fall into the mental side, perhaps. Education. You might have some spiritual goals. Ah. Why is that always one of the last ones? <laughs> All right. I mean, it's a good list. And there, you know, here we are in business works talking about business, but also want to, to consider the different aspects of you know, talking about life balance. I mean, is it really in balance? It's all in. This is the balance. You can't really take one as a small business owner you can't take one hat off and put the other one on but you can share that thought that energy 
all that. So this is, is this technically a workshop or is it a seminar? It's a workshop. Okay, I treat it as a workshop. So that means there's a little bit of work to do. So if you would, take a minute mentally or put pen to paper and look at some of these aspects and just while you're while the juices are flowing, make a note or two. One or two aspirations this year where you'd like to improve in maybe each one of these areas. Thank you. So if I could be old enough to ask, what are some things that come to mind as far as improving in some of these areas? You may want to show share an improvement in your business, a goal or aspiration for 2022. But what are what's a sampling of the things that are going through your mind in, in some of these categories? Yeah, go ahead. Coming home from work and uh, just having dinner with the family and just have dinner with the family and not bring up the stresses from work and your day-to-day -day stuff and just kind of leave that at leave that at the office and just kind of focus on the family when you get home. And David, I would I would say not allowing the challenges that we're facing right now because it's not just the pandemic. We have the issues relative to spiraling costs. We, we've got an inflation going on. We're seeing rising costs, shortages. Uh, employment, I, I speak every day to, to small business owners that are still trying to find employees. Uh, so not allowing the ch challenges you face to hold you back from your goals. Okay. Right. Longer term focus, big picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else comes to mind? Business, family, hobbies, health. Education. Always take time for yourself and always spend time working on yourself, you know, whether it's working out, you know, I mean, anything, you know, uh, okay. so reading a book. So, um, yeah, read a book, do anything. Budget time or so. Yeah. Always take to work on yourself, learn things. We'll come back to that. And what he just talked about, the professional development, you know, continuing to, to grow your, yourself. Sometimes we forget about that. Okay, so what would be, not just you, Bill, but professional development? What's an example of a goal for this year that might be, what do you want to do? What do you want to learn? What's a new skill set, a mastery of something? Or, you know, something, sales 101. What, there's a book I want to read. There's a course I want to take. What's a specific example? There's a podcast I want to subscribe to. What's a specific example? See, that's why I take, that's why we sit down and have to think about it. I, I can tell you, and I don't want to argue with the time, but I can tell you as Chamber of Commerce, we've got to look at non-traditional ways of both getting folks active and non-traditional ways of revenue. Because uh, you know we can't be solely looking at membership dues. Uh, what are, and, and if we're not having people attending things right now, <clears throat> what are some non-traditional ways of creating the revenue? And same thing for retail businesses. You're seeing more online purchases or less people into the store for fronts. How do they get out to those customers? Right. So diversifying your lead flow. That's marketing for the delivery of the goods, the product, the service. Um, to spread out the, I guess, multiple buckets then where that cash is coming in. You know what I'm saying? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, as a, you know, as the sales manager here at Energy United, um, you know, I'm always looking at how to improve processes uh, to really wring some more margin and bottom line of, of the products and services we do sell versus having to just raise prices. So I'm all constantly looking for process improvement. Right. A lot of leverage in there. You know, do it once and benefit forever. Put a process in place and <clears throat> let it run and then uh, tweak it and improve the period. Oh, abs absolutely. Good. Thank you. So, you know, the, the point is, and it's kind of a question that stumps people, are, what are your goals and are they in writing? And it's not 
you know, here we are talking about business. And so even what I jotted up here is predominantly on business. Oh, there's another one up here. Increased brand awareness. Good, Leo. Yeah. So if that is a goal, you know, increasing increasing brand awareness and being able to put some more meat on the bones of where are you now and then what's the what's the finish line coming at the end of uh, December this year? What kind of improvement you want to see? Maybe you already have some ideas of the certain channels you want to improve that brand awareness in or product or service. So overwhelmingly, the, the goals, the aspirations that are written down, they just happen. You achieve those more because they are written down. And plan to, that's why I'm excited to have a, uh, you know, this actually working with everybody. That's why I use a flip chart because we can think through things, we can say things, but when it's in writing, either the act of writing or seeing it visually puts it in a different place on our brains. And it becomes, you know, we're able to recall it. And, uh, there's a thing in your brain called your reticular activating system. It's kind of the base of your brain and treated as the, the connection between your conscious and subconscious. Um, you know, classic example of your reticular activating system is that um, it, it's, here we are at the turn of the year. A lot of people bought new cars if they were actually available. Um, and they're excited. They go on the car lot and that, man, I'm the only one in town that's going to have this car in this color. And what happens the first, you know, you drive off the lot, man, there's another car. There's another one. And there's what you identify as important to you. Your brain, your subconscious will work on your behalf to find those things. Even with three kids when they're out on the playground and I hear dad, you know, in the midst of all the chaos and other kids, I can pick up, my brain picks up on the sound of my kid's voice. You, if, if we can acknowledge and, and respect the fact that we have a reticular activating system in our heads, Use it to your advantage. Put pen to paper, write down some goals and aspirations, and while you're sleeping, while you're going about your day, your brain will be looking for solutions and, and evidence of that, opportunities to make that come true. Sounds hokey. I used to think it was hokey, but I'm a believer now. So it absolutely works. So the exercise, we can't do all of this today, but if you were to actually list out two, three, four, five things for each of these areas. And I'm gonna give you a tool, you know, Bill, Sylvia, at the end of this, I've got two tools I'm gonna to email out to you that you can use. One of them is a Darren Hardy tool. Um, it's a life assessment tool that lists out these. And there's a series of questions that will help you identify how you doing in each and what area of life might you wanna put a little energy into this year. So it's a really cool tool just gives you some direction on how do I set goals? What are the most appropriate things to make the life that I want to live? But the exercise would be to, after you brainstorm all the things you can do is narrow it down to the top 10, right? And then think about each of, you know, if you've got 20, 30, 40 things, narrow it down to the top 10 and probably distribution across several of these areas, but then boil it down to the top three. And what we talked about earlier, I think here in, in everyday life is focus. There are so many things going on. Just pick one or two things, three things that you can really focus on and, and nail. So once you do that, we're gonna go through some other tools and tips and tricks to actually achieve that. But without the actual focus, yeah, I, I think about it, a jet engine. I just went on a flight over the holidays. It's been a while since I've been on a plane. But how big is the front of a jet engine? I mean, we were on the 777. That was a big plane. And it's huge. But the way the jet engines work, any engineers on the line, forgive me for butchering this analogy, <laughs> but, it, you know, huge on the front. That's the top of the funnel. All the opportunities, all, it's sucking in air from heat, birds, trash, whatever. It's sucking in everything. What it's doing is condensing that down into the back of that thing is a much smaller hole. And so the air that's coming out of all the things coming in, what's coming out is a laser focus. And there's a ton of energy behind that. So that's what this exercise is doing basically is take all those options, narrow it down. So what comes out the end of this process, you've got some focus, two, three, four things that are really going to, and I go on and on with analogy, I think. My understanding is Warren Buffett. You reckon he gets some good investment ideas? People are coming to him all the time. 
My understanding of what he does, he'll lay it all out on the table and he'll go through, assess different ones and he'll pick one, two, maybe everything else off the desk. Might put it in a drawer to evaluate later, but he gets it out of sight and out of mind. And that's the idea of, yeah, there's a ton of opportunities that you can do to grow your business. Pick a couple, focus on them and nail them. You make an educated guess as to what's going to be most effective. So pick those and, and work through that with focus and intentionality. You can get to everything else later. All right, it's going to be a long year. So if that's the case, what do we do with these goals? Change lanes a second here and give you, Bill's got up here, um, the, the entrepreneurial ladder. Again, I work with business owners that have entrepreneurial spirits and are ambitious and committed to growing up the entrepreneurial ladder. And in essence, the, you know, as you look at this ladder, you know, students are basically negative one. You know, they're a cost to society. We're paying for them to learn. Um, an employee, once they graduate or not graduate, they get a job, they become an employee. And then as an employee yourself, you earn money from your time and energy and work. Okay? You're just getting money. That's a convenient exchange. It's an agreement with, you know, contract with your employer. Do work, get paid. Easy enough. Once you get to a point where an entrepreneur gets to a point where, hey, I'm tired of working for the man. He's got this cushy life, big house, nice car, doing everything he wants to do. Yeah, that's the belief. Hey, I can do this. I'm, I'm smarter. I'll work harder. I'm able to do it, make all the money for him anyway. So they become self employed and you start earning money for yourself. Ultimately, business grows. I know looking around, you got some employees. So um, you become a manager. And so at that point, you're starting to make money from other people's energy and efforts. Ultimately, as a manager, what I talked about to start with was being a manager, managing the business and the people, but ultimately getting a general manager, for example, and being able to step back a little bit, go do other things, start other businesses, other locations, and grow in that fashion. And as an as a owner and you've got other people in place, you're starting to make money from the profits of the business, not from you being as involved. Uh, investor, you start taking that, that money from the business or other businesses or properties, making money from that money. And ultimately, as an entrepreneur, you know, built up that network, you know, Warren Buffett's of the world, you know, it's not necessarily his money. He's got people coming in and investing in him and his knowledge and his network experience. And it uh, kind of takes off on its own in that regard. So, you know, any business owners on the line here, evaluate where you are, where you want to go. Anything is fine. But identify what you want. And then, depending on where you are, what's the next rung on the ladder for you? So, again, we're talking about, you know, life plan here. But for this year, what are the areas that we looked at that you can assess some goals and apply to get to the next one on the ladder intentionally? It may happen this year. It may happen next year, whatever. Um, but the intentionality is where that benefit comes. All right. So how is this going to happen? So I'm going to flip pages here. So last year I did a talk on goals and achieving a whole lot more. And you may remind, remember this, might be uh, a new exercise for you. But, um, what we want to, boy, that looks rough with two different colors. But, um, the process of it, there's a formula for achieving more. And basically, it starts with big picture dreams, find the sky, money and time tonight. And you, what do you want? If you, if you had no limitations, what would you want? Next is setting the goals, which we're talking about here. Learn, learn. So by that, if you're setting goals that you already know how to achieve, they're probably not big enough goals. So the goals should stretch you. You'll need to learn something to be able to achieve the goals, put together a plan, and then act on the plan. So it's five steps. Primarily, you know, in the conversation, you know, time we have together today. We're talking about some of the goals and then how to make those come true. Okay. So are you guys familiar with the acronym for goals, setting goals? If SMART goals. SMART goals, exactly. 
So going through, if you don't know the acronym, for the, you know, let's let's look at it here. SMART goal stands for specific. So specific, measurable, achievable, results oriented, and then time based. So to put a little bit more meat on the bones there for SMART goals, specific, you know, if we want to um, talk about, okay, I want to I lose 20 pounds over the next six months. Very specific about what I want. Can I measure my weight? Yes, I can. That's pretty easy. Is it achievable? Probably. Yeah. Results oriented. Is it in alignment with where I want to go long term? Sure. And there's a time mix. I said six months, I think. So that's a, the litmus test for a, a good goal is, does it meet these criteria? And if in your head, you're talking goals, if you're talking to employees or you know, colleagues about what their goals are, man, I'm gonna lose some weight this year. Push back, how much you know? You know are you talking about by December 31st? When it makes sense to move that up a little bit, maybe so you can enjoy the summer or this vacation you got planned or, you know, but help one another with the clarity of these goals. Find a little exercise, pen to paper, make sure those, the goals that you, you know, from the other page that you write out meet this criteria. But I wanna add one additional piece to it is why. And it actually, call it smarty goals, it's corny, but maybe you'll remember it. The end, that why, is in reference to why. The reason I believe a lot of New Year's resolutions don't actually come to fruition, goals don't happen, is because they sound good, they are specific, measurable, achievable, results-oriented, time-based, but there's, there's no why behind them. It's a logical decision. It's not an emotional decision. So if you can, as you're deciding on these goals, if you can decide why is that important? Number one, how does it really benefit me? But even more importantly, who else does it benefit? How does it help somebody else? And when you get that emotional side you know, in, involved, you'll be that much more inspired to actually see these things sort of go through the hard work, get up early, stay up late, do the extra learning, we call that, that focus. So add the why factor in there, and I think you'll see a whole lot of whole lot of fruition come through that. From the coming back to the so that, that's the goal aspect. So we talked about the, the smarty goals. From a learning standpoint, what is if you've got some new goals, again, the goals should stretch you. They should require you to learn something else. If you don't have to learn something else, you know, they're not big enough, it's not stretch enough, it doesn't put you into your, you know, doesn't get you outside of your comfort zone. And that's that's gonna be critical in your own self-satisfaction and, and feeling at the end of the year that, yeah, this is a good year and I grew myself. But what are, you know, I'm curious, what are some aspects, what are some areas where you can actually learn? Just throw in a few areas if you know that you've got to stretch yourself and pick up some new skills or talents or knowledge or something, where are some areas that you guys already are learning and what are you going to tap into in 2022 to grow yourself? What are some options? Well, in the case of losing weight, you know, possibly talking to somebody who's in the business that Fantastic. Giving us some ideas that you haven't tried yet. Fantastic. Go talk to somebody that's already in there. Yeah, what else? Anybody read? <laughs> Podcasts? There's this crazy thing called YouTube. I mean, it can tell you how to change your transmission or fix a wiring problem or, you know, learn how to lose weight, exercise. We said, what are, we're business owners now. I'd love to hear online or in the room, what are some of the things that you're tapping into on a regular basis to improve yourself? 
have a have somebody that keeps you accountable. Okay, excellent. Does does a spouse do that? Are they the, the right one to, to do that? No. <laughs> oh, and we're yeah, somebody else in the business, somebody that's gone before you, yeah, colleagues. Yeah, the Facebook group for one second, you know, so that's been a big help for me. Learning new things, learning stuff that they see that I probably will never see or haven't seen yet, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's been a big advantage yeah. too. And Facebook, you know, have those contacts. Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, phenomenal. <laughs> Resource. Yeah. Hey, a lot of hey, 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 Bill, this is a, a little plug for the chamber, but just being around other entrepreneurs and there, there are opportunities to network with other peer groups as well. So for instance, I belong to a couple of different peer groups and in those groups, we're sharing uh, goals and, and we get that accountability through those peer groups as well. Uh, but the chamber might be a good place to meet up with some guys uh, and gals. Uh, to share some of those um, commitments that you're going to make for the year. Absolutely. Mike, thanks for that. But also, also um, and I'm not plugging David. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sound, like, it's fine. But, you know, a, a good business coach. I mean, I, I, I have a, a former board chair who's a business coach, and we get together several times a year, and he sits down. And, and great, I mean, after I, I talk to him, I'm like, thank you for the money. City. He always goes, I, I didn't give you any I, I listen to you and I help you refine your focus, but getting, uh, having a business coach, someone who can, can help you. All of us in school, we had that teacher that pushed us and we didn't particularly like it or that coach that made us run further or do an additional lap, but you got to have somebody that's pushing you and helping you. So uh, having a business coach uh, it, it really goes a long ways. Yeah. And obviously thank you for that. It's amazing how, you know, over the years, I mean, I, I first started out thinking, man, I've got a chemistry degree, I've got an MBA, I learned the business is, I, I know this stuff. But man, I, I spend a lot of money, a lot of time every year continuing to improve myself. And overwhelmingly, there's different businesses <coughs> in the room and online. And business owners know their business better than anybody. And a lot, in 90% of the cases, they know, Bill, to your point, is they know they can do it. Less than two percent of people will actually do things on their own. They're why you know there are some people, but it's really rare that somebody's going to get up and go do it and drive themselves and push themselves equally to, to have an outside influence. Whether you go to the gym, you know, to get in shape and lose weight, there is a trainer there, and there's something there about him having an appointment with you at six thirty a.m. that makes you just get out of bed and go where you wouldn't do it on your own. You know, I've got. Um, Friends or colleagues that have been in um, like AA, there are urges to do other things, but having that outside accountability and the discipline to have somebody that you can call in case of urgency or need and to just keep you on track to provide structure. Yeah, my kids, you know, I'll play high school sports and, you know, one of them's playing um, college baseball now. He wants to play games. He wants to go to the game. You know, I've been practicing all my life. Why do I have to go get some more swings in? But with a coach there to get him there to work out and get the swings in and practice the drills, run all that stuff. That's what makes the difference. High performers across the board, athletes, actors, business people have outside influence. Some kind of a coach, life coach, business coach. What do you what do you want it out of all those things we listen? What do you want to get better at? The kitchen outside influence it just works it just works so you know if it's me fantastic if it's somebody else that's fantastic as well just get that in your life was there anybody um i saw up here uh Ringley, you mentioned google analytics um courses i mean there's tons of stuff online that you can research um to improve your knowledge and learn um, use the tools and softwares fantastic Great input. And you know, the things that you read, the things you hear, pocket, you know, on the way down here, I was listening to um, Darren Hardy's, Darren Daly. If you don't, it's a nice, easy thing. It's a five minute kind of podcast. I think he does it as a video, but it comes, you know, it's in your podcast app. And just subscribe to that. He's got a new one every morning. It's a little tidbit to get you up and going. Um, and I do that every, every morning on the way to the office. So 
great resources like that, tons of podcasts. Use your time instead of listening to the talk radio or some of the music and stuff. Plug in some time. Your, your vehicle is a university in itself. And use that time wisely to improve yourself. So um, from a learning aspect, figure out a plan. What do I want to get better at? You can only recognize we can only take in so much at one time and retain it and apply it. It's not just the content, it is the context. Read the books, listen, all that stuff, but then whether you do it on your own or get an outside influence to apply what you're learning. How does that, how does this right here apply to your business? Because it's general, right? But what's the nugget to build on? You know, what's the one nugget that I can apply to my, my role here at the chamber? Or within each of your businesses. A big thing for me was uh, like when I learned something, being able to explain it and teach it to somebody else. That's how what really helps me with retain stuff. I'm in a uh, investing group. There's like ten of us, so we you know we all get on every night and trade together, every morning and trade together, and being able to like put what I learn with them, you know, it's like it's been a big help. It really makes you take off. It really does. Man, that's great. Mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. And you know, it's a good time to to plug in. The environment you know as you're learning be intentional about your environment the biggest influencer on our lives and where we're going and what we can achieve is is the people we're around and the environments that we go into um you know we, you can you can be pretty strong on your own but over time the storms of life will wear you down if you're you know not in that right environment. so an environment of investors that are yeah. eager and not yeah. just there to yeah. have a cup of coffee or something but serious about doing that which yeah. stuff that's environment you can check you know that make sure you're going going you know just keep up with you and you know like it's, i don't know it's just great yeah it's a great opportunity that's awesome. changed my life a, a good bit good so find that environment and then out of that out of the learning we put a plan together that makes sense to achieve not just the goal but the goals are the stage gates to the, the bigger picture, the life you want. Um, so that plan is on paper. It is specific. And it might you might write this game plan out using the sports analogy. For this game right here, for this quarter, here's the game plan. And it's pages. But if you can boil it down, I challenge you to boil it down into like a one pager that if I gave my plan to you, You'd be able to go. All right, I see what I see where we're going, and I see what the, the steps are. Right, make it simple where anybody can understand it, and it prevents your head from going bouncing around all these different areas. You know, it's the plan can be very very laser focused, and then ultimately the the action that goes along with it. You got to execute it. Best of plans, you know, sit on desks all the time and don't get executed. The secret to executing it is where next these six pillars. And when we look at what holds people back from actually executing their New Year's resolutions or their goals for the year, it's, in, it, it's different for everybody. <coughs> Part of it is going back to the goals section of why is that important? What is it that's important to me? How do I personally benefit? And who else benefits as well? And call that alignment is the first of the six pillars. So when I, when I say alignment, what comes to mind? What does that mean? Get in order. Get in order, okay. What else? Anybody? Have you planned together? Okay. Share. Prepare. Okay. Have the clear expectations, what it is you, you know, how you're going to achieve that. So what do you get aligned? What's a common thing you need an alignment? Anybody bought tires lately? <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, better get them quick. You know, yeah, it's yeah. a trend. On I know. I told my son, you cannot drive it. But, uh -huh. I mean, they're. I think they're getting old. You know, four or five yeah. inches, and then eleven inches. Yeah. Beyond that, like, dude, I don't care about getting treaded. But so, what does an alignment on your vehicle do? Keep you on the road. Keep you on the road. 
So it's an exercise of making little adjustments and understanding are all four tires pointing in the same direction? Are they true? Because can you, come on, I'm looking around at you, except for you, everybody else has a, some gray hair. Yeah, but we've I'm driven car. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, wait till next year. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but when uh, we've driven cars that are not aligned, right? You kind of got to fight it sometimes from going up the road, or there's a little bit of the, and the wear and tear. So when things are not in alignment, you can still go. Absolutely, you can go. But there is some damage. There's some wear and tear. It takes extra energy. You're fighting yourself. You're fighting yourself. So get in alignment, and that is basically where we're going, that longer term vision type thing, and why that's important. And if you know that for yourself, then it's a lot easier to talk to if you got employees, vendors, customers, your networking people, if they, they understand who you are, what you are, where you're going, and who might be a good connection a good referral, you know, it just is that much easier because everything's going in the same direction, right? Without that wear and tear. Okay, so once once that's clear and you go through that Q&A session to dig deeper and dig a little deeper and dig a little deeper and get real clear on the alignment, then it makes sense to have a plan. And yeah, that's redundant to the last piece, but once we know where we're going, once we know that we want to get to the end zone, are we going to run it? Are we going to pass it? Or what are we going to do to get there? And yeah, that's that's clarity. It gets everybody on the same page um, to to understand the process as they show up at work, as they go out in the field on their own. Yeah, you know, one of the as I say that one of the books that I read recently um, was Jocko Willett. Um, Extreme ownership. Anybody else familiar with former Navy SEAL? Incredible read. And as a business owner, as a manager, man, you know, the, the print, one of the, the takeaways for me was he owned the situations over in the streets of Fallujah where if he sent his team out, you know, number one, you know, he was back in the, the command center watching and listening to his team. But as he as they got orders from above, if he didn't understand why this mission made sense it was his responsibility to ask why i need to understand so i got full buy in in addition to that as he relays the mission down to his team they needed understanding and full buy in how this fits to where we're going long term otherwise they're going to be kind of not all in so and he the, the extreme ownership to tie on to the why is it was, it was on him to make sure they were fully equipped to operate in the field. Because stuff doesn't go according to plan. Would you agree? I mean, they need to have the background and understanding of options that this is what happens if. And he was back at the, you know, he talks about it. He was back there listening. It was not a matter of, sir, we have this situation. What would you like us to do? There's not time for that. Lather at stake. He, they knew the communication came back. This is what we're hurrying. This is what we're doing. And if they had any upsets, he took ownership of that because he had properly prepared it. So 100% ownership, the buck stops with you. Make sure the training is there and the education and the communication of why we're doing what we're doing and where we're going. And that the plan supports all of that. Okay. So once the plan's in place, oh. I spell KPIs. You guys know the acronym KPIs? It stands for Key Performance Indicators. So it's it's your dashboard, you know, the in your vehicle. Your car on that computer can tell you a ton of different things. But what do you look look, look at on your dashboard? Speed, gas, maybe temperature. Yeah. Those kind of things. And if something's out of whack, you know, a light will come on. But the idea of the dashboard is this made up of your KPIs. Out of a, a million different things that you can be looking at and watching and monitoring and stuff, only a handful of things are really, really critical for right now. 
And that's what you want to pay the most attention to. Once a week, once a month, quarterly, you know, you can look at all the other data and dive into that. But the point is, identify what your KPIs are. And there's really two different kinds that I look at. One are the lag indicators and then the lead indicators. So for perspective, the lag indicator might be what were your sales for the month, for the year? What was your profit? But how many customers do you have? Those are lag indicators. They are, you got to wait. If, if your goal is to hit a certain thing December 31st, you're going to wait a year to know if you made the goal or not. And that doesn't really make sense because you could burn a whole year doing the wrong stuff. So setting KPIs and the goals to where they're monthly or something more frequent. But things like revenue, <coughs> profit, customers, those are lagging indicators. They are the results of other activities. You cannot go out and get a customer. Right? I mean, but how do you get a customer? You get a lead, and then you go through a sales process and convert them into where they pull out the credit card and let's do business. So the lead indicators would be number of leads, your marketing, and your sales process. What's your conversion rate? I get 10 opportunities, you get 10 potential home inspections. You actually get to do eight. Fantastic. Your conversion rate is 80%. So based on those numbers, you can calculate each one is worth X number of dollars. So if your goal is to do $100,000 in inspections, divide by the number, you know, your average inspection tells you how many you need. And then if you know you need to do 80 inspections, then your conversion rate, eight and 10, so whatever that math is, you've got to get a hundred leads or, you know, and you back into, all right, I need some marketing strategies that are going to give me hundred leads in this month, this year. And then you can set your marketing budget according to that. So your business is math. Business is logical. We make it emotional, but the business is really logical. It's math. And if you get your head in that mode where you can look at it logically, you'll make a lot better business decisions. Part of it is having the numbers to make, excuse me, to make good business decisions with. And that's just some baseline tracking. Okay. So if you ever need any help setting that up, what makes sense for you, by all means, let me know. Um, but that, you know, business can be emotional. Sales is emotional. Buying is emotional. But from the business side, the business is, as a business owner, it's logical. Understanding that your customers and prospects work off of emotion, that's where you kind of relay the, the, the feeling side of it. You know, use that intentionally. But operate your business off of the numbers. There's you know, a lot of financials and also the performance kind of things from the marketing, sales, customer service, ratings, return clients, those kind of things, overall profit margins. Or the KPIs. Okay, so where are we going and why is it important? Have a real plan to get there that everybody understands what are the measures that we can talk about and when do we talk about them in our regular meetings? What are, okay, I'm on camera here. One of my aspirations for this year is to improve my writing. Okay. <laughs> it's Every time I, it, I even spent extra money and got paper with lines on it to help me so it doesn't go down. But you know, I'm working on it. Um, regular meetings. So, what are we doing in regular meetings? We go back through where we're going, what are the KPI, what are the metrics so far, how are we doing, is the plan working, is it not? You know, the Panthers is the results that they're getting. I don't, either way, they go in at halftime and on the way in, they look up at the scoreboard. Is the game plan working or not? And for most cases right now, it's not. So they try to make a few adjustments and come out with a different game plan. But if it's working, good job, guys. Keep it up. We'll fine tune a few of these things. But the regular meetings are to review how we're doing. That's the scoreboard. And talk about it. So your employees don't necessarily understand business. If they were entrepreneurial minded, in many cases, they would be out there running their own business. So 
you know, slow down, help them. They don't think like you do. They're not driven like you're driven. Work with, work with them. In, in most cases, that's the case. Work with them where they understand more of the things of business, more of the things going on in your mind and what you're looking at. What you look at, they will learn to look at. Okay? So the regular meetings, the next piece is investing your time. And that, depending on your business, at least three to five hours per week on your business. Now, if you're a one person operation, that's hard. Yeah, I've got a meeting later today with somebody um, that has a business. He's running 55, 65 hours a week. You know, there is no time for growth. And that's what we're, we're talking about is he's 100% in the business, not on it. So if you want to achieve more, there's, you know, sorry, but it just takes some intentional time to put in some processes to build a, in, in this case, part of it's going to be setting up a recruiting, interviewing, hiring, onboarding, retention process for him to get somebody else to help him. And then what happens when you got, you go from one person to two people doing the work out in the field? What happens to your bottom line profit? Goes down, right? So then it becomes, all right, we need to fill a pipeline so it's a marketing and sales and, and get customers to come back more and more. But it, you know, they're parallel paths. But invariably, you know, you saw the statistics, the number of people that never have employees, you know, they're just working the tail off. Part of it, three to five hours a week on improving yourself, improving your business. But then the, the other balance I would encourage you to, to look at is the balance of your billable time that you're actually making money for the, for the business and the back end support, the admin functions, the growth of the sales and marketing aspects and processes and systems. And it might, you know, in some cases it might be 50, 50. It might be 60, 40 or 40, 60, depending on the nature of your business, you gotta figure that out. But if you're doing hundred, like this guy today, if he's hundred percent in the field, there's no time allocated to, if he gets sick, revenue stops. An extended period of time out of business. And that's just not worth the risk. So, um, Bill, was there a question? You, know, you, you shared something uh, a year or two ago in a program that I, I, I found very valuable. You talked about, you know, you have your, your business coach, but you have a business coach. And uh, yeah, two. you were getting oh, two coach. Yeah. You, you were having a client, a prospective client say, I want to hire you, I want to hire you. And you were, you were being spread out and you weren't focused. And the business client, Suggest. I mean, the business coach said, suggested you refine your your market, and you saw yourself going up exponentially. Kind of like Padova. You know, you you've got X amount of people that can deliver, <clears throat> but if you say, oh, okay, you got a call in for, let's say, Cabarrus County, it, it wouldn't make sense to tie up your delivery drivers too far out, unless it's a huge catering job, because that that would that wouldn't work for the business. So it's making sure you refine your you don't have the shotgun approach. So true, you know, now, you know, when you're, when you're local, you know, carry out or, or dine in, or, you know, that kind of, thing, you know, naturally you're going to cater to a certain geographical area. You know, you, people come further sometimes, but the majority is going to be fairly geographical. For a lot of our businesses, man, it is a global economy. You, know, you can ship anywhere in the world. You can buy from anywhere in the world. And it blows my mind now. I've got, you know, when I first started this business, I was, you know, Morrisville, pretty, pretty local. But currently I have a client in outside of Chicago, got one in Asheville, we got several down in South Charlotte. You know, this, this magic of Zoom, it enables, I've got, I was out in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico with a client in November for several days doing straight strategic planning. I meet with them every week via Zoom. It opens up the world, but if the world is your sandbox, is the term that I use. You know what sandbox you playing in, and who you want your sandbox with. So, if it's a global economy, it just makes sense to dial into exactly the type of customer or client that you want. Yeah, you know, I'm looking over here. You know, you, 
it could be anybody anywhere, but geographically it doesn't make sense. But it may be that certain size homes or certain price points or neighborhoods or the type of realtor that refers you is just your sweet spot. Just look at where you're having successes and figure out what the common denominator is. You know, and do more of that because there's tons of options. We can't be all things to all people. You can, but you're not gonna really, really thrive. There's too many distractions, right? So dial that in. Okay. Um, investing your time, again, the intentionality of learning, improving yourself. There's uh, a concept called the law of the lid. You know, in a in a container, you know, there's a lid and you can bounce up the top of it. If you can expand that container, then it allows you to go a little higher. You know, take the lid off by improving yourself. Sort of like a vacuum in you know, NASCAR country here, we're drafting. You know, if that leader is going faster and harder, it just allows us to, to, to fall in and it almost pulls us along. A little sidebar, anybody bikers? You know, anybody ride a bike? Yeah. Scary out there. <laughs> so, so there was a um, years, I mean, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, um, when I was in chemical sales, I went and did uh, the multiple sclerosis breakaway to the beach. It was 100, I did, if you don't I know, did that. 150 miles. Yeah. Wow. I rode out of Columbia to Myrtle Beach. Two yeah. days. Yep. Did the same thing, but from here, you like left like a rocky camp or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a, okay. Yep. Yeah, I kind of walked like this for <laughs> several days. So, but I, second day, uh, you know, I got split up from my buddies and we're at different paces and all that. So, second day, I somehow, you know, I'm putzing along and here came this long string of bikes. And, you know, they're like, jump on. It's like, sweet. And, you know, getting closer to the beach, there's a pretty serious headwind, you know. And, and so we're going along, and the guys that lead in the front were pulling, and they're gradually pulling off and, you know, dropping to the back. And, and I was just cruising along, and I was like, oh, no. You know, I'm like number three, I'm number two. And when that dude pulled off, it was like, boom. Oh, wow. And, you know, it, all of a sudden, everybody's tapping their brakes. <laughs> and it's a yeah. It's okay, it's okay. So I peeled off and I got back in. But what a great, and you know, personal experience for me to be in the draft and your employees and your customers are very similar in that regard. If you're learning and improving yourself and you're creating that vacuum behind you, your company will take off. What you do, your company will do. So improve yourself, invest in your time, you know, invest your time in improving yourself um, and magic will happen. The last of the six pillars, is to call it self-education. And those are, now you can overlap, investing in your business is partly the learning aspect and training other people, investing in your business, investing your time in your business is process and leverage. But a lot of what I was talking about too was the, the education. Just grow yourself, learn, 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 and fantastic things will happen. And we, we talked about some of the resources out there um, to grow yourself, um, podcasts, YouTube videos, books. I mean, I mean, I've got tons of books, tons of book recommendations. If, you know, I'll put it out there to anybody. If you, if you want some input as to a good book to read, to focus on sales or marketing or leadership or management or strategic planning or whatever, let me know. Happy to, to offer those up to you. Um, go buy them on Amazon or whatever. Uh, improve yourself. So th these six pillars, whether you're dealing with a business or with a kid's baseball team, football team, professional ball team, corporations, departments in corporations, get clear on where you're going and why that's important. Create a plan that makes sense that people can understand and buy into. Set up your dashboard of KPIs, have regular meetings to communicate and talk through that plan and performance. Allocate some time to improve your business and processes and the leverage of that and then improve yourself. And it'll be a great 2022. And you know, this is, frankly, that's the model that I use in, in coaching clients day in and day out 
is making sure that we know where we're going, there's a plan, and that we look at the metrics daily, weekly, monthly. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd open it up to, to a few <coughs> questions or comments <coughs> that you might have. Takeaways, we call them, um, I don't know if the last slide is up there. Uh, it's not a killer point. Yeah, I killed it. Okay, that's all right. Um, I, I like to hear, you know, for my own benefit in, in talking with people, you know, what, what were some of the takeaways or we call them BFOs, blinding flashes of the obvious. What is something that, that maybe stood out to you that you can do or will do in, you, in your business either today or this weekend while you're watching it snow for the coming weeks? I can look at this a little bit different. With one of those sheets, the very first thing says business and religion. Uh -huh. And if you take business out of there, I'm a retired person. Mm -hmm. Everything below that can fit into my wheelhouse. I'm not in, I, you know, I'm retired. Yep. But from family, homes, hobbies, health, and uh, spiritual, so that's, that works for retired people too. Absolutely. And so, you, yeah, in your case, that's not, that's not part of the puzzle. Right. But it is a balance. Remember the business, the business is a tool to the life that you want to live. It is not your life. This is your life. And your business is a component of it to provide the resources, the freedom, and the ability to make choices. But that's what we want to do is, is design this in a way that it feeds and enables the rest of us. Good, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else online? Thing that stood out to me from a builder's page is something that I recognize is investing three, three to five hours of yourself in your business. Being in the middle of it all the time, yeah. you can't you can't do that. And I've been looking for a way to be able to step back to take that time to evaluate the full on what's working, what's not working. And just being able to, to carve out that time. That's yeah. And it, and it. I'm, I've been around enough to know, it's seen enough, I've done it myself, that the reality is the business requires what you're doing right now. Right, you can't cut back on that. So the truth of the matter is, and maybe it just means extra hours for a short run. Now, you know, is that an extra thirty minutes in the morning? Do that every morning. That's a couple hours. Do that three hours. You know, and go to bed earlier. Get up earlier. You can do it. For me, I'm a morning person. I'm up five five fifteen most every morning, and that's my quiet time to do my things to get ready for the day. But my critical thinking, these kind of things are done in the morning while I'm fresh. At the end of the day, I'm fried. And that's where I do some reading or some other less critical thinking activities. So <coughs> know, everybody's different, but know your, your rhythm and, and allocate the time to do those right things at the right time. Okay, but, my encouragement would be to figure out a few extra minutes to do that, build it in with the intentionality of how is this investment in my time going to recapture that hour or two or five from the rest of the week, and then you kind of start backing off. But without that investment and putting in the leverage of the systems and processes, you're never going to get off that answer, right? right? Which is That's how where I most people are. are. Yeah, I felt like that for a while, but definitely writing down what I was doing every day, what I had to do. That was kind of an easy way to break my time down a little bit yep. to get, you know, to educate myself a little bit more on what I do. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's everything radon testing, water, you know, there's different parts of the house, there's new things coming out, you know. So I like felt like writing down what I got to do and breaking in that time, like making it actually on my schedule. Hey, I need to read this for, you know, 30 minutes or yep. whatever. And that kind of helped put it into a better perspective of actually seeing it than just saying, oh, hey, I'm going to do that and always let myself down. It, it, you know, the, the reality is with technology, what it is now, if you'll plan ahead, yeah. you can make things happen. You've got a break between appointments. Yeah. If your your technology allows you really to pull off into a coffee shop or a you know the side of the road or something and jump online, use your hotspot, do a few things. Don't just burn the time. Because then when you get home in the evening, you might cry. I just don't have any energy to focus to do anything else stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. You can like use that. time wisely. Uh, in that regard, I've got a client up in 
in uh, Statesville and a project manager going out to the job site, get the guys started, checking them out, then coming back to the office to do work and then going back to the job site, maybe in Charlotte. Like, no, we're not going to do that anymore. You know, you've got a computer, you can get Wi, wi Fi anywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? From AT&T, you pay 100 bucks for this little thing, plugs in your little OBD thing, and $2, like $2 or something to add on your phone bill. There you go. I do that. Make a note. I do, my, also, I do a lot of my reports and stuff, you know, sometimes in my truck, or, I mean, even some of my learning, I do, you know, an appointment for you, too. Any other BFOs, learning takeaways? Yeah, one of, one of the things that um, I've done in the past before, it's called a racy matrix. So you write down every single thing that you have to do um, during the day, week, month, and then it's um, determining whether you're responsible, accountable, um, consulted, or informed. And if you have so many things that it's ultimately irresponsible, <laughs> um, then you have a problem, you know, to see if maybe you could farm that out to, you know, another agency outside of your business or somebody that works for you. It really puts it into focus, just how many things you actually have to do. And then, you know, am I the best person to do this? Is it a, is it a good use of my time? Does somebody else have the bandwidth to do this so that I can spend it on more, um, more productive things to add to the business value? Brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Anybody else? I guess in, yeah. uh, hey. uh, yeah. so one more thing. I appreciate the way that you broke down the uh, KPIs into uh, both the lagging indicators and the and the leading indicators. And uh, you know, while we might look at the lagging indicators as you indicated at the end of the year, I appreciate you breaking it down. So as we're tracking throughout the year, we're really focusing on those leading indicators. So I appreciate you kind of breaking that that down for us a little bit. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. And I'm sorry, who was that speaking? Yeah, this is Mike Osborne. Oh, Mike, okay, thanks Mike. So, sure. A um, couple of closing thoughts. Bill, I will send you to send out to the group. I've got two tools that I'm gonna share. One I mentioned to you is Darren Hardy's life assessment tool. And it, it is a three or four pages of little questions where you rate yourself. And at the end, it will come up with sort of a, uh, a chart that has um, spokes of a wheel. And the idea, of course, if a wheel is in balance, it's round and it'll run smoothly. If there's some flat spots, it's just an indicator for you hey, maybe that's intentional. This year, I'm trying to grow my business, and so there'll be a flat spot there. I've got to take away from family to do that. Intentional. But if that's not the case, it is a tool that will help reveal maybe some things that will be you know, of interest to you to focus in on. The other is a, uh, a business profile questionnaire. It's 100 questions. You rank yourself one to five on each of them, and you add up a total, and it'll give a chart at the back, again, sort of a wheel within the confine. One is a life balance, the other is more your business balance. And it'll give you an idea, man, I need to spend a little more energy in my systems or in my financials or in my, my marketing. And, you know, it, they're tools to help you in your business. Of course, if somebody wants to review these, I'd ask you to shoot them over to me. I'd love to see the results and what your actionable step is as a result of doing that. But then I also ask, who else needs to be a part of this? If, if you know somebody in your circles, in your, in your networking, and my desire in 2022 is to get the word out that resources are available. There's tons of resources through the, the Small Business Center, through the Chamber of Commerce, through outsiders like me. There's so much out there that's available. And oddly enough, some people just don't know. They just don't know. So who else do you know that should be a part of this that should be on our emails, Bill, the chamber and, and mine to get some of this, you know, complimentary workshop, complimentary materials, you know, to grow your, grow your business, okay? So I'd, I'd appreciate any kind of, um, you know, connections along those lines and let's help, you know, the whole, the whole area grow in your small businesses this year. All right, Bill? 
First off, did, did anyone is anyone leaving here without some nugget? Like I, I told you, I, I, David, fantastic job. Thank you for taking our year off like this. I, I really enjoy listening to you and, and helping get uh, myself back on track. Again, I can't, <clears throat> if, if you don't have a business coach, obviously, I'm sure you're taking on additional clients. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, yeah, over the years, I, I'm in my ninth year now, and um, uh, it's been my intention to build a product ladder that is, there's something for everybody. Everything from free, you know, books, point integrations and podcasts or other learning or stuff, to small group. You know, I've got two small groups going now and then, you know, one-on-one at different levels as well. Team trainings, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, no matter what the need is, you know, as you talk to people and there's resources available. Talk to the chamber, talk to the, whatever. But, yeah. but even if you don't use a business coach, you, you've got to have an advisor, you've got yeah. to have a mentor, you've got to have somebody pushing you. Um, on Monday, the Lake Norman Chamber of Commerce will observe Martin Luther King Day. We're going to be sending out a, an e-blast to all of our members. Number one, uh, several months ago, we did a, uh, a Zoom virtual program that was uh, sponsored by MSC, and actually the speaker was from MSC. It was building uh, internships that embraced diversity uh, and inclusion. So we're going to be sending out a link to that particular program. And then I, I have a column that reflects on the life and work of Dr. King. So that's on Monday. On Tuesday, I'm gonna have Sylvia send out specifically on this program here. We will have loaded this on YouTube. So if you know somebody that could benefit in your office or your business or a friend, a colleague, um, it'll also have information that David, links that David's gonna share with you that, uh, that collaborates back with this particular program. I'll listen that out. On Thursday of next week at four o'clock, downstairs and visit Lake Norman's Visitor Center. We're gonna have a, um, our new member orientation. That's ideally set up for those people who are new to the Chamber of Commerce, find out how to get more involved, where some benefits. It's also prospects if you've been sitting on the fence thinking about joining. And then sometimes it's just a refresher for somebody who might've been in the Chamber for nine years and they're like, you know, I don't know all the things that you did. So that's gonna take place at four o'clock. David will be sharing uh, what our board of directors vision. It, it's going to be downstairs in the visitor center. Uh, but David will share what's the vision of the board of directors for this coming year. Um, I often tell people I'm like the ship captain. I don't say, here's what the chamber is going to do. My board plans what the chamber is going to do. I, <laughs> I see that it's carried out. And then um, we're going to have on Friday, our focus Friday, which is strictly virtual. But we have Senator Paul Newton, uh, North Carolina State Senator, Paul is the chair of finance, which may not be sexy, but he's also the chair of redistricting and elections for the state. And if you're following anything, just two days ago, uh, a three court panel determined that the new districts drawn in the legislature are going to stand and they're lawful. But I'm, I'm sure they're going to take that to the North Carolina Supreme Court. Fully expected, same results there. But uh, he's going to be talking about that next week. And that's very important because that's going to determine who are the, the representatives we have uh, in our House seats and in our, in our um, Senate seats, but also congressional seats as well. So uh, Paul will be on the program this next, uh, next Friday, 830. And it's strictly Zoom. Um, and uh, we'll get that information out. So that's, that's everything. Um, David, any last words for everyone? Uh, thanks everybody for joining and participating. This just proves the value of a chamber membership. I mean, for $295 a year, the base level, I mean, you get these quality programming things that you want to in increase your business this year, your role in society with the business community and to, to learn and get better. These are the things that the chamber does. And thank you for coming, David. Thank you. Everybody have a great weekend. Be safe. Uh, supposed to be wintry conditions and uh, also be careful with the pandemic. Um, please be careful about the folks that you're around because uh, I got, I was telling David that I went down to Atrium, got tested three days ago. I've had a cold for a while, so I got tested. I was negative. Um, and then, then uh, same afternoon, came in contact with somebody that I didn't get close to them, but you know what? They were in the same room. Mm -hmm. So it's a snapshot. You, you can get tested today and be around somebody tomorrow. So be very careful out there. Be very safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Be safe. Be good, Bill.